here. Well, I'm showing you everything you need. I hope you have it there with you. And you'll also need an iron, which I have not included here. I believe you may need a thimble. It's good to just have it on the side in case. And a 27 inch, at least a 27 inch piece of ribbon that coordinates. I'm choosing this super, super light cotton, almost like a canvas uh, fabric for my tote. And I'm thinking I may make the utensils tote in this beige color a coordinating thread and as you can see here this coordinating thread doesn't really coordinate with my fabrics i didn't have a perfectly matching one but like i said in the past courses don't sweat it just keep going and this is my uh sewing needle by now you know that and my straight pins my shears and of course my cutout lunch tote pattern suggested that you buy at least three quarters of a yard of fabric for this project but of course um, if you have scraps that you're working with, that's fine. And I just wanted to mention a quick thing about fabric. So obviously by now we know that this is the wrong side and this is the right side. And then the edges, if you can see here that don't fray, you see I washed this one, that's why I frayed more. Uh, the edges that don't fray are actually called selvage edges. And it's just a good and new term to know when you're sewing and we really don't pay attention too much because we're making these products and we're really not that important. But um, the selvage edge is the finish edge that does not actually fray. And whenever you're working with a pattern for a garment, I don't know, a shirt, pants, something, and it tells you the pattern may have, this one doesn't have it, but a pattern may have a line that runs across this way with arrows saying grain line, it all that means is that you're gonna place your pattern down following the grain line, like along. That arrow would follow the selvage edge. But this doesn't apply here, so I just wanted you to know that something like that does exist with fabric, and I really haven't been using that vocabulary because it really hasn't applied to us yet. So I am going to make my tote handles. I'm gonna actually cut out my tote handles and my tote and by now you know what the fold means so i'm going to uh think about this as you can see as i'm slowing down thinking this is my fold yes so i'm going to work it this way remember you always work on the wrong side and you pin down and you cut on the wrong side of your fabric and when you're working with stripes you have to be just a tiny bit more careful with matching them up and all that. So I think, yep, this looks pretty straight. I'm gonna pin this here. I mean, I can, but I'll be wasting fabric, right? Let's not waste. I always believe in saving. Is that pretty straight? Yes, here we go. So I'm gonna pin this down and cut it out. And it tells you here that you need two. So I'm gonna do this process twice. And I'm gonna do the same with my handles. But because I'm working with stripes, it's really something extra to think about. I'm going to have to make sure that my stripes on my handle go the same direction as my tote bag. If I care. If I don't, it's not even an issue. So what I like to do when I have a large piece of fabric is to actually cut this out. And I'm completely holding the scissors in an odd way. So here we go. Okay, here we go. So two pieces of tote and for fabric tote. And then for the handles, again, two cut on the fold this way. And you know how to do this. So I have all my fabric pieces cut out. And what I want you to do is work with your tote piece first. So these are the handles and this is the utensil pouch. And I am going to push this aside because we don't need those yet. And I want you to focus on the tote, the body of the tote. So what we have to do here is we have to iron. So I'm just going to place my mat here, my ironing mat. And I'm going to show you how to iron down the hem and begin sewing it down. So on the wrong side of the longer side, of the longer width, what you're gonna do is you're gonna bring down 
about a quarter of an inch. Now you can use a regular ruler to measure that just to get an idea of what it looks like, okay? Or you can use, which I did not show you in the beginning, um, I don't expect you to have this, but if you are really loving sewing, maybe you should get one of these um, sewing gauges, okay? Measuring gauges. So what you can do is you measure, you measure exactly what a quarter of an inch looks like. Okay, so I'm really good at eyeing, so I'm gonna keep it here anyhow, okay? And you're gonna be really careful not to burn yourself. If I sound like your mom or dad, I'm really sorry, <laughs> okay? And I'm gonna measure, making sure I'm keeping up with it. Again, you can um, use a regular ruler. You don't need one of these hem gauges. Once you have about a quarter of an inch ironed down, you're going to iron down now about half an inch. And again, you can use a ruler or you can use your hem gauge. Did I call it a measuring gauge? I mean, really, after a day of teaching middle school, <laughs> that's what happens to me. But it's okay. I still love this and have the energy to come here and teach you as well. So I'm gonna measure, so obviously I'm gonna bring it up a little. If you're a little off, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be so precise, but you do have to be precise, um, not on the half inch, but I'm making the other piece the exact same seam width. I'm just gonna measure to make sure that I have the same amount and it's not getting bigger or smaller. I think it was trying to get bigger. All right, so this looks good. I'm gonna give it a nice shot of steam. I'm gonna do the same thing to my other panel or my other piece for the tote. And before I do that, I'm going to pin these down. And as you've probably guessed it already, I'm gonna sew right here on the edge, or very close to the edge, five to six stitches per inch. I really don't believe you need to even bother drawing a guideline as the edge of your hem is a very good guideline. So the whole point of making a hem is to keep the outside of the tote nice and clean. This is gonna be the top of our tote and you don't want it to fray. So with my double threaded needle, I am going to, you know what I'm going to do? Actually, I'm going to start here on the inside so you don't see my knot. And then I'm going to sew five or six stitches per inch. All the way down. So this tote is going to consist of a lot of straight stitches. Straight running stitches. We're not making any curves or any of that. So... Let me tell you something about your sewing machine. I know we here are just hand sewing, but if you have a sewing machine and you know how to sew on a sewing machine, of course, you're gonna wanna use that. So don't think you can't use that. Some students are here just to learn new things, new projects, but of course, you can use your sewing machine to get this project done and any of the projects done. Now keep going and do the same thing to your other panel. Now that I've sewn down my hems on the top of my tote, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna create a French seam. And this is what a French seam looks like. So when you look inside your bag, eventually your finished bag, you see how the seam is nice and clean. It's not like the edge of a fabric where it's all fraying and ripping off. It's actually folded over. So it's a really nice look and you know, you want a nice clean inside to your toe. You don't want any fraying fabric getting on your food containers, etc. You want it to look great. So we're gonna make this French seam. So for the first time ever, I'm gonna tell you to put your wrong sides together. Line up the top. It's really important that the top is really well lined up together and looks good. And now what you're gonna do is you're gonna pin to keep them together. I'm gonna just put two or three on top. And 
about two on the sides. And after you pin, what you're gonna do is you're gonna sew, yes, here on the right side, and I'll tell you the direction you'll be going. So you have to keep in mind that the top of the tote has to stay open. Just a few, we don't need that many pins. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew, again, five or six stitches per inch down here. And remember, especially when we're doing this by hand, you're gonna put a really good uh, end off stitch there, do two or three of them. And then you're gonna sew all the way down about a half inch away from the edge of the fabric. And you're gonna come down, sew here, and then up here and again, do a really good end off. So I have sewn the sides and the bottom of my tote. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna use your shears and you're gonna cut very close to your sewing line, but you're not, of course, gonna cut the line. And I'll show you why that is in a moment. You wanna trim off all this excess fabric. Getting close, but not quite the stitch because of course that would only lead into having a nice hole, which there's really nothing nice about that. And then my last side here, let me just get a better view there. So now that it's trimmed, don't worry about any extra pieces or any small details. You're gonna turn this bag wrong side out. And when you do that, it's really important to poke out the corners and to make sure the sides, your seams here, are pressed as far out as they go this way. A really good thing to do at this point is to actually iron it down. So I have my iron ready to go and I'm gonna show you why that's super helpful. Just gonna get my mat out. And then I'm going to make sure the seam is all the way here. The seam is all the way here, okay? Pushed out as much as I can. I'm gonna feel for it, right? I'm gonna feel for it. I'm gonna push it all the way out, and then by giving it a nice press, and like I like to say, a shot of steam, it's really staying in place much nicer. And you're gonna do that even to the bottom and to the side as well. You're gonna make sure the seam is pressed all the way out, so feel for it and press it out. Okay, mine is out there. I'm gonna give it a nice shot of steam. Good old shot of steam. And then we're gonna do this one as well. So after you uh, give your seams, or your side seams here, a nice shot of steam, what you're gonna do is you're gonna sew. And if you need to pin, you can. I feel like I don't need to pin because I'll hold it. But if you really want to be sure and accurate, you can pin. You could put like two or three pins just to hold it in place. And you're going to sew, again, the same direction and the same, just the same way you did before. So from here, do a really good end off, two or three. Now, you do have a couple of layers of fabric now. That's why I suggest you may need your thimble to push through the needle. So you may need that. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna sew all the way down, five or six stitches per inch, make that nice turn, turn the bottom, and then come up to the top. End off really well over here. And I actually forgot to mention, as you're sewing now down the side, make sure you do keep about at least, you know, your half inch away from the edge because you want to make sure that the seam, the seam that you feel here, that you were feeling before you pressed, you don't want it to be where you're sewing. You want it to be away because then when you turn it right side out, you don't want it to get caught. Like, look here, if I went too close, 
this would be the outside and it wouldn't look so great, right? It would be have all this fraying fabric. So make sure you stay away from the seam. Going around, so I'm gonna turn it right side out. And my tote is definitely looking like a tote. And what I wanna do is poke out these corners because we're gonna give it boxed corners. Here's what boxed corners are. Let's look at my other finished tote. You see how on the corner we have a sewing, actually a seam this way? See how it sits? So when it sits, you have more room at the bottom. So how to do that is we are going to open this up and right here is where we're going to feel. What I like to do is match up the seam, seam to seam. Okay, so I'm holding it together and the higher up I go from the corner, the higher up, the more width I'm going to have down here, the more space at the bottom. But you don't want to take up too much space because then your tote will really shrink in size. So I think a good amount would be, let me use my regular ruler here. I think I'm going to go up about one and a half inches. So at about one and a half inches, I am going to, yes, on the outside, I'm going to mark a line here. And I'm going to pin it down. So as I'm pinning, I'm going to make sure I feel my seams sitting on top of each other. So my seams here, I'm just feeling for them that they're sitting. And I want to make sure it doesn't move when I sew. So, no pun intended, I'm going to add my pins straight pins. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Now I already know it's one and a half inch that I'm coming up from the corner. I'm going to make sure my seams are laying on top of each other. I'm going to measure one and a half inches up, draw myself a nice line so I know where I'm sewing. So much for my straight line, right? But I know what I'm doing here. Okay, and I'm going to put two pins in so it doesn't move and our goal here is to now sew around so remember we have a few layers here of fabric to go through so you may need your uh, thimble to press that needle through so we're going to do five or six stitches per inch down here and again we're going to flip it around and I'll show you when I do mine we're going to flip it around and do it on the inside across and just like we trimmed the seams before or very close to the seams, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to stay so close, but don't actually cut your sewing line. And just like before, we're going to turn this guy right side or wrong side out. And the same thing, we're going to push this down. Make sure that seam, you can feel that seam here. If you need to, you can iron it again. All right, I'm going to put a pin just to keep it really, um, just to get it to really behave, I meant to say, in the same place. And I'm going to sew, again, I'm going to sew five or six stitches straight down, but I'm going to make sure that I feel the seam away. Boxed corners are sewn, and I'm going to turn this tote, which is pretty much done, except for the handles, but the body of the tote is done. And how adorable is it? It just sits so cute. Is that even a thing? Can a tote sit cute? Well, this one does. Okay, so <laughs> let's work on the handles. So we're going to do this to both handles, and I'll show you how to make a handle. A super simple process here. So you're going to take this right sides together. You're going to fold it lengthwise, and you're going to pin, matching up the sides and you will pin to keep it together. Okay, now that this is pinned, you are going to sew, it doesn't matter which corner or which end you choose, you're gonna sew up and all the way down and then you're gonna end off super tight there because we're gonna add pressure there. Why? We're gonna turn this thing right side out. And you're gonna do the same thing to this one. 
I have my handles ready to go, remembering that one end is not sewn closed. You can actually sew it closed if you want, but we are actually gonna be doing that here as we attach it directly onto the tote. So what you're gonna do on one side of your tote, make sure the, the uh, seams are out and you can feel them here. So meaning you're looking at exactly one side of the tote and it's not crooked in any way, you're gonna lay this handle down exactly where you want it. There's no right or wrong way. I mean, I wouldn't stick them out so wide that way, but I would somewhere stay somewhere near here. All right, and I'm gonna use two pins to hold them in place. And one about here, and you can measure this part, you can be a bit more precise. I'm gonna measure, I have about two inches and a quarter. So two and a quarter inches, and I'm gonna move this over here to about the same spot. And two pins. And now what I'm gonna do is I like to sew this handle one handle in place and then put on the back because I feel that they may shift as I'm sewing one and the other one is pinned in the back, it may shift around as I'm sewing. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna sew, I'm gonna make a box, okay? I'm gonna go this way and just trace and make a box. So for my unfinished end here, as I'm making that box, I'm closing off the open end of this handle. So I'm gonna create a box. It, you can instead create an X if you like the look of that, but I think I'm gonna stick with a box. I have this side of the totes handles on, and now I have to do this side here. So make sure the seams of your sides here, the side seams are out. And then what you can do, a super easy way, is feel the edge right through the fabric here. You could feel the edge of this strap and you know exactly where to place this one. I just feel for it and I lay it right on top. And when I feel that it's directly on top, I pin it. And I do the same thing with this other end of the strap. Okay, this way, I feel for it right here. I have it a little lower. That's what's good about it. This is all lined up. And I'm gonna pin it in place. And the same thing, I'm gonna sew a box around this one as well. We're gonna sew these two pieces together. And shame on me, I should have ironed out these creases. Well, I actually did, but then I folded it. All right, all right, excuses are not good. So I'm gonna make sure they are lined up and I'm going to pin them together and I'm going to sew them together, but I'm gonna leave an opening, not as wide as my hand this time, but just a small opening like this. And I can actually put in some pencil marks to remind me. Again, I'm gonna stay about um, a half inch away from the edge as I sew my five or six, six stitches per inch. So I'm pinning and I will sew all around leaving an opening there. Remember, you need a good end off stitch at your openings. So my next step, after sewing the perimeter of this rectangle and leaving an opening, I'm gonna turn it right side out. And here's where your test comes. If you made those good end off stitches at the opening, and I'm going to use my hand, the best tool we have first, to push out the corners. All right, here we go. We're gonna give it a nice iron, but before I do, I'm gonna use my chopstick or my point turner. Since this is long, like a, a pretty long project, where I have to reach, I should say, I am gonna use the chopstick instead of the point turner. I feel I go faster with it. Hopefully you found yourself a 
chopstick by now or something, maybe even a point turner. And you're gonna turn these in and you totally know how to do this by now, right? You're gonna turn those in just like you do to a, to the opening of a pillow and I'm gonna iron it, okay? This time I'm not going to actually put pins in it because it'll be quick and easy this way. Just hold it in place and place the iron right over it, just not on your hands. <laughs> and I'm giving the whole thing a good press. Now, this is great that this happened so I could show you. I wasn't careful and I didn't poke out this seam, right? So, so you see what happened here? I have a crease, so you need to make sure, well, in this case, I need to make sure that this is all pushed out and I'm doing that with my um, chopstick. So they say a good instructor always shows his or her mistakes. Well, here are mine. And it's good because now you know what to avoid. There we go, much better. Shot of steam. Checking this one now. These edges are pushed and pressed out and so are these. And then before I go here, I'm feeling for these. Yep, these are two. So now we have a nice looking rectangle with clean edges because they are turned in and sewn. So what you're gonna do here is you're gonna, once you have it like this and you're gonna rem remind yourself that this is open, but we're gonna sew it in a second. We're gonna fold it in half, right? Lengthwise. So once you fold it in half, what you're gonna do is make a pouch. Like our second or, th what is it, our third class here, you're gonna pin it together and you're gonna make a pouch like this, this way and turn. That's it. Okay, so make sure your corners match. So I'm gonna use my pins here to pin everything down. Okay, and everything gets pinned. And now I'm gonna sew my five or six stitches per inch, making an L form. Remember, this is gonna be the opening up on top, so do your very good end off up here. Try to match these as best as you can because it will always show. So if these don't match here, that will always show. Now, if you don't mind something off like that, that's fine. But if you do, it will always, if you do mind it, it will always bother you. So make sure they match before you sew. All right, let's get going. My pouch sewn, and you can leave it just like this and use this as the outside of your pouch, or you can turn it again this way so that you formed a nice clean French seam. Either way you want to use it is completely fine. So I'm gonna use again my chopstick to press this all out. And the best way to make it look crisp and clean is to give it a nice iron and steam. Remember, I do this to get it out. Sometimes it works, but here I'm, I'm uh, videoing, so I really don't have the best amount of space to be doing that, but usually I do. I do take whatever I'm turning right side out, scrunchies, you name it, and I give it a whack in a good way, not, you know. Okay, so here we go, pressing this out. There is a lot of fabric here, and you don't want to trim this end. You notice I didn't trim it because then your fabric is going to fray, right? So I'm giving this a little press, feeling confident that it is totally not going to rip. And... I'm gonna give it a nice press right on top of my mat. And this way it looks nice and finished. And now the last step after this press is to sew on the bow. So you may wanna consider making two of these for one tote. Here's my thinking. Um, first of all, you, you bring your utensils in these so that you know, you keep your, your utensils nice and clean. 
but you may want to have two pouches where one holds your utensils that are clean and then your other ones your other pouch holds your utensils that you just used up to you it was just a thought okay i see i have to press see my corner there looking funny all that means is look at that is i have to press out a bit more okay this is completely normal press that out the chopstick is such a wonderful tool i can reach so far in there and just in one try push it all out okay i don't mind that the seam is sticking more out to the side here i'm okay with that and i'm gonna give it a good old shot of steam and now we're looking better so this I've made a little bit wider. You'll notice if you even just take a fork to work or school. Well, you guys are students. We're, you're not going to work yet. But if you take whatever it is that you take, I made it a little wider because um, you may want to stick your napkins in there too, your paper napkins or whatever type of napkin you bring. So the last step is to add your ribbon, which is super easy. We're going to hand sew this on, of course. And before you even do that step, I want to show you if you go shopping for ribbon or you go into a fabric store, there are so many different types of ribbons you could buy, like, you know, printed ribbons, really cool, um, any kind of graphic ribbon. So you could really give your tote like a super cool theme. I kept mine simple, sort of classic, because I was in that kind of mood today. But typically, I like to make things fun. So what I do is I'm gonna use, what I'm gonna do, I meant to say, is I'm gonna use my typical uh, utensils that I have, and I'm gonna measure before I put my bow. So I know that these are the ones I always take with me. Maybe you're doing plastic, I don't know. And I know that it should stop about here. So doing that, I'm gonna know that I want my, my ribbon somewhere up here because I wanna catch it all. Okay, so my ribbon's going to be somewhere up here. I'll make a little mark. Okay, so take this out. And now I know where to place my ribbon. Right here. Sew this ribbon on. We want to make sure that we are just sewing onto one side. Okay, so if you need to for the first time is like actually get in there and actually feel... Um, that you're not sewing through to the front because this is going to be our back all right so when you're sewing you may want to do that so i'm going to find the center of my 27 inches which is about here all i did was fold it and i know that this is where i'm going to place it of course my super pins are going to help me pin it in place and not to the front of this cool pouch all right stay sometimes when you put one it doesn't it doesn't really stay but I'm gonna trust it for a moment maybe I shouldn't <laughs> but I'll trust it for a moment it does work I've done this before and I'm gonna do a quick running stitch up and down and I'm gonna go over that running stitch a few times so I'm gonna start under the ribbon because I want to hide my knot so there you go, I'm starting there and then just keeping my hand inside, you, you could trim the tail in a moment. I'm gonna do a quick running stitch up and down. And I am totally okay that I do not have at the moment cream colored, um, cream colored thread. Normally it would bother me, but it's like, get over it Adriana, it's gonna be okay. <laughs> And I'm gonna switch directions, but I'm gonna switch in this interesting way. I'm just gonna go this way as if I'm embroidering. Because I'm left-handed, it doesn't work if I flip it around. I'm gonna go down and make a running stitch this way without catching the front. I gotta be so careful. Now I would do this a few times. I would go up it, maybe up and down it, three or four times. Did I catch the front? No, then I'm good. And I will go around it again or following the line again, I meant to say. It is like, you know, a, a bit um, awkward to 
have your hand in here and, and doing this. I'm going to move this guy because he's in my way. I made him a male all of a sudden, right? He's in my way. Okay. And there we go. It's just the running stitch up and down. It is handmade, so it doesn't bother me that it seems this way. Now, what I'm going to do, because I can reach in here, what I'm going to do is actually end off inside. It's not bad, guys. You can actually reach it. And we're going to do the same exact thing after we end off, about an inch away from our first. When that happens, don't worry, I'll show you how to fix it. From our first stitch. That happens when you make your uh, thread a little too long. Mine isn't, but mine happened because I'm videoing and you guys know how that goes. Okay, so that goes one. There goes one stitch. And then what I'm gonna do, I'll trim that, is I'm gonna put another of the same running stitch up and down about an inch and a half away right here. My ribbon sewn or tacked in place and my pouch, my utensil pouch is done. Again, you can consider, you should consider making uh, two if you think that idea of mine was great. I'm going to knot the ends so that if and when this ribbon starts to fray, it won't be a problem. And I'm gonna knot this one as well. All right, and once it's knotted, it's good to go. Of course, it's gonna scrunch up a bit more when you tie it, but you, it's a closure with a bow. And what's great about these is you just throw them in the wash. You throw everything in the wash, the tote and everything. And how great is this? You just made yourself an adorable lunch tote, which I guarantee people are going to ask you where you got it. I hope you enjoyed this. One last note, if you've made these fabric flowers, maybe you'll consider sewing one or two onto the tote, or maybe a few all around the front of the tote. It's up to you. Just, I thought I'd add that in to remind you if you've made these fabric flowers.